Good morning, everyone. How are we today? All right, let's go ahead and we will sing hymn 338. We sing the greatness of our God. 338. We're singing all verses. today in fellowship and family and with friends. We pray that you guide us all and continue to lift us all in these hard times. We pray that um, you lay your guiding and healing hand upon Cindy for she has um, pneumonia and recently a heart attack and is currently in the hospital. We pray that you just guide her Lord. In the name of your son Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And now we will sing hymn 337. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. 337. And we're going to sing all verses again.
Today's first reason, sorry, today's first reading is in Psalm 111, verses 1 to 10. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. In the company of the upright and in the assembly, great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Splendid and majestic is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. He has made known to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his precepts are sure. They are upheld forever and ever. They are performed in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Fingerprints have long been used to identify people, but they can be faked by creating copies. Similarly, the pattern of the iris in the human eye is a re reliable source for ID until someone alters the pattern with a contact lens to skew the results. The use of biometrics to identify individuals can be defeated. So, what qualifies as unique identifying characteristics? It turns out that everyone's blood vessel patterns are unique and virtually impossible to counterfeit. Your own personal vein map is a one-of-a-kind identifier setting you apart from everyone else on the planet. So pondering such complexities of human beings should prompt a sense of worship and wonder for the Creator who made us. David reminds us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and that is certainly worth celebrating. In fact, Psalm 111 reminds us, great are the works of the Lord, they are pondered by all who delight in them. Even more worthy of our attention is the divine maker himself. While celebrating God's great deeds, we also must celebrate Him. His deeds are great, but He is even greater, prompting the psalmist to, to pray, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. So today, as we consider the greatness of what God does, may we also marvel at the greatness of who He is. And now for some worship songs. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Running on a little deficit of coffee this morning. <laughs> but the greatness of the Lord is always a very easy subject to talk about, to praise Him about. And so uh, that's what we're going to do this morning. Great is the Lord and worthy to be praised. I'm going to ask you to rise. We all have a full, full lung full of air. And uh, let's sing this together. Great is the Lord.
Lord. Amen. 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 <clears throat> the power of the Holy Spirit is with those who write songs, just as they are with uh, the Spirit was with Apostle Paul and James and Peter. I have only one complaint, that they have a higher vocal range than I do. <laughs> but it's great to praise the Lord and, and to praise Him for His greatness. So we're going to continue. How great is our God? How great is His name? This goes way back to to uh, vacation Bible school and Sunday school and, and uh, the kids would sing this with a with great amount of gusto so that's your mission this morning. How great is our God? How great is our God? as children of light. Brother Bruce, how we walk as children of light. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Justin. Thank you for those inspiring devotions this morning. Put in some Sunday school devotions, and guess what we have for the first time in a long time? Sunday school. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. 
Okay. How do we walk as children of light? Many of the Sunday services I led last year were all part of a series of sermon studies on Christian privilege, past, present, and future. We finished the past and we left off on what I expected to be, would be the last of our Christian privilege present studies, which was a consideration of light and truth. I would expect to move into the Christian privilege future in June. However, as many point out, man makes plans and God watches and laughs. Okay, we make our plans, but it will be as God directs us to do. We spoke about light and truth and God being light and Jesus being the light of the world. But I thought before we move on, we should not only talk about our privileges, but spend some time on how do we do it? How do we develop and use our privileges of walking as children of light? We have these privileges, but are we using them? And that's the whole real point of, of this whole series of looking at our privileges. Have we tucked a lot of them away in the closet? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, I remember I've got that. Do you know it, do you use it? Are you building on them? Are we growing and developing them? Are we sharing them with others? You know, they're not just given to us just for our own additional comfort. To further our ease and make casual our living. Thus, we take some time here and look at what it means when Apostle Paul says that we are to walk as children of light. And how is that to be accomplished? For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live, live or walk as children of light. And how do we do that? Well, first, if one finds themselves in a hole, surrounded in darkness, and seeks to get out of that hole, the first thing you need to do is stop digging. Stop digging deeper into the hole. When we come to Christ, we must repent of our digging in the hole that has, has us wallowing in darkness. It's a natural instinct and a natural thing for us. Jesus says, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me. In order to follow Jesus, we need to be moving in the same direction, in the same way, walking as Jesus walked. In Peter's great sermon at Pentecost, he makes clear to those listening what needs to be done to begin. You will remember Peter had pricked the hearts of the Israelites when he told them that they had killed the Son of Glory, that they had killed the Messiah. Acts 2.38 says, Repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent. That is, turn around. Stop what you're doing. You're headed in the wrong direction. Feels good, feels right. You're comfortable with it. It's the wrong way. So how does Peter know that the ones that he's speaking to, that they're all, well, what did I say? Headed in the wrong direction. 
Because as Paul says, there are none righteous, not even one. Our ways are not God's ways. The world's ways and the world's concerns are not God's concerns. Proverbs 21.2 says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. This seems right. This feels good. But the Lord pondereth the heart. Luke 16.15, Jesus said, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The great accomplishments of men that get so many cheers and attaboys, they don't impress God. Those are the things of our natural nature. That would be our sinful nature. And what does God find when he looks upon the heart of man? Ezekiel 36, 26. The Lord says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove, I will remove from, your, from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. We are sinners. Inheritors of Adam's sinful nature in stone hearts. Only when we come to Jesus Christ, the true light, are we given the Spirit of God and our hearts are changed from stone to flesh. And then we become, can, we can become the children of God. John writes in his Gospel in chapter 1 of Jesus, John writes, That was the true light which coming into the world <clears throat> gives light to every man. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. A new heart. It is true that some stone hearts are, are, are not as hard as others, but none of them are made of flesh until they are given the Spirit of God by becoming the children of God, by seeing and believing in Jesus Christ. That's how Peter knows all who are listening there and all who read his words over these last 2,000 years need first to repent and be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the heart of flesh instead of stone. For some, this is a very difficult place to start. Excuse me. I can say that most of those with whom I've had absolutely no success, whatever, with trying to share the good news. Most are just those who don't see that they have any need for changing course in their lives. Especially a radical change, a radical about faith. I'm good. I'm doing just fine. That's okay. Oh, I'm fine. Hey, I'm glad it works for you. I'm good. Ever see that? Never. Ever run into that? <laughs> For those who were like me, having a totally unwarranted high opinion of myself and the way I lived, it's not easy to hear that what you're doing is all wrong. 
that you need to go the opposite way. I could point to my, what I felt in my heart were successes and think, if this is wrong, who, who needs to be right? This is going great. No man comes to me unless the Father draws him, Jesus says. All our experiences are different. God deals with us as individuals. Many a book has been written by those who had to hit rock bottom before God had their attention and could draw them to his son. But that's not everybody's experience. My experience was pretty much the opposite. As I was asking, is this all there is? I can tell you, brethren, I was some surprised to learn what the answer to that question was. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew who, who it was that was speaking and he had my undivided attention. That was actually 40 years ago this month. Wow. I'm a testimony to God's patience and long suffering, as I'm a very slow reader and a very slow learner. It would be years before I grasped the concept that I am to be a new creature a new creation in Christ. I, I didn't have trouble doing it, but in retrospect, I had to dismiss a whole lot of scriptures. Reading to continue to try and work with God to make those, you know, little improvements that uh, might be needed in this already fine piece of work that I was. I wanted to know what parts of the Bible still applied to life today. Don't we hear it all the time? The Bible isn't relevant to today. What a joke. What a joke. There is nothing more relevant, relevant today than the scriptures. And there'll be nothing more relevant a hundred years from now if the Lord tarries. Or a thousand years or another two thousand. Because the words are written by the eternal God. Oh, I was conceited, but you know, I, <laughs> I did know that I wasn't perfect. At least not yet. So I'm thinking if God needed my help, you know, to make his things work a little better, hey, that's all right. And even if he needed to make a little adjustment here, a little adjustment there to me, alter just a bit the way I am, then I'm willing to make that great sacrifice. In Mark 2.17, Jesus tells the scribes and Pharisees, when Jesus heard it, now he, what he's, what's going on here is Jesus has, they have asked the disciples, the Pharisees and, and uh, scribes have asked um, Jesus, or ask the disciples why Jesus was eating with the sinners and, and, and uh, tax collectors. And Jesus says, when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That was me. I didn't need the doctor. I was good. It took me a while to realize that Jesus didn't come, suffer, die, and be resurrected 
to give me a little tummy tuck and make me more perfect. Repent from what? From everything about faith. Everything is going in the wrong direction because it is the world's direction. You fit nicely in the world. You succeed in the world's ways, in the world's thinking. But Paul tells us in Romans 1, 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. Give the Lord everything. Now, does that sound like a little tummy tuck to you? <laughs> Present your bodies as a living sacrifice? There is nothing salvageable or good in the old man in the world's ways. We are in for a whole redo a whole new beginning, this time with a heart of flesh. And Paul continues, and do not be conformed to this world, but, by, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Suffice it to say, if we need a renewing of our mind, it means that we, do, we cannot know the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God following the minds we have today, or the minds that we had prior to coming to Christ. This may seem a very strange way to begin a study on how do we walk in the light, but first we must realize that we humans are spiritually nocturnal. We've lived and learned in darkness and we are quite comfortable and natural in the dark. In fact, we often find light very uncomfortable and that most of man prefers the darkness. We'll decide what comes out in the light. If we can control what the, what's going to be in light, that's a good way to be, we think. So this comes as no surprise that the world thinks they're fine. And they see no need for a doctor for them. But brethren, understand our lessons that we're going to look at this morning and next time probably. But our, but our lesson is not for the world. It is for those who are to walk and live as children of light. These are written for us. Yes, these reminders and admonitions are intended for us. So let's begin by seeing what we must do to quit digging. Apostle Paul, in Ephesians chapters 4 and 5, lists many of those things which collectively we may have or used to do. They are the works of darkness from which we must repent and cease doing. Before we get started in Ephesians 4, Anybody have any questions or comments to the things that we have spoken of this morning? Any, anything you don't understand there? Okay. Let's go to Ephesians 4, 17 to 19. And Tim, if you get the mic ready, please, we'll... Uh, We'll be calling on, on some brethren and looking for your input and, and questions. Ephesians 4, beginning at, 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 at verse 17. 
This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who pass, who being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Okay. Let me open those verses to your, your, your questions or comments. Anything stick out there? No? Pardon me? Yes, Anna. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to, um, not to go on it, but to go back to Ephesians 2, uh, 2, 1, 1 to 3, and it, it, it just it goes along with it. And you have, and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in times past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we have had a conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And uh, I was thinking, I was having a lengthy conversation with somebody where I lived, and they said, oh yeah, you can be a Christian and not be baptized, and I just, you know, they just weren't listening. Oh yeah, when you're born again, you're free from sin. Mm -hmm. I said, but Jesus was an example. Mm -hmm. And I explained to them the difference. But it went, you know, they said, oh no, our church says you're just born again. Yeah. But that's not true. You can't get into the kingdom without being baptized, correct? And I don't know what else I can tell them. What, what, did, what did Peter say to receive the Holy Spirit, to have your baptized. sins forgiven. Yeah. Repent, Repent. And, be baptized. and be baptized for the forgiveness okay, of your I'll sins. Try that. Okay, yeah. um, Thank you for that, for those verses, Anna. They're right, they're right on. We were, we, we were, we were once all of this. Okay. We're not talking about things that that uh, we haven't haven't lived at one point. Yeah. Okay, in our lives, but we're there no more. Hopefully not. Okay. We are we are we are to be there no more. Okay. <laughs> let me let me put it that way. Yeah. Are we perfect yet? No. no. God's still working on us. Sure. And we're going to talk about 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 some of some of those. Uh, um, trials and, 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 and those uh, challenges, okay, in walking in light, okay, walking in that light. Anybody else? 17 to 19? Okay, let's look, look at, at, at uh, my first question is, um, from whom does, does Paul receive these instructions and by whose authority is he telling them? Is this, uh, uh, you know, Paul's, Paul's uh, thinking, well, well, you know, I've been told that Paul hates women. He, God, God hates, wants to make sure people don't have fun. Okay? So, where, where's Paul getting this? Brother Dennis. Well, I, I was going to go back to 17 and 19 and just say, okay, we can, uh, yeah. there's a lot of Christianity that sits in the pews and has no idea why they're there. Amen. You know, and so our encounter with people who say, you know, well, you know, I've got God in my life. Uh, you worship God your way, and I worship my way. There's a 
encounter with people who think they have God in life and they don't know anything about God. And, and you know, when they tell you that the Bible is irrelevant, uh, as you were saying before, that's one of the first clues that will give it to you, that um, they don't really know anything about uh, the things of God. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not saying that to be arrogant. I'm not saying that uh, because I'm full of pride. I'm just saying uh, we're privileged to know what we know because uh, we trust the Word of God and we trust the Holy Spirit that works in us uh, to reveal those things. And, and it's too much of Christianity makes it uh, like a checklist that they need to check off uh, things to do and, and then go about their day without ever thinking about God the rest of the day. Uh, for you and I, it's 24-7. Uh, I mean, it's every time we're walking around or doing something, uh, God reveals himself to us. And, uh, you know, we marvel, you know, every morning you get up, the sun is shining. Thank you, Lord, good Lord. You know, thank you for the sunshine. It's raining. Thank you, Lord, for the rain. Yes, thank you, Lord, even for the snow. But it's a, uh, you know, we thank him in every situation. And he's on our minds, and he's on our hearts. And I can't say that for the billions who live on this earth, who walk around, who, who have a form of godliness, but don't know any of the power. And uh, so it doesn't surprise me that Paul can write these words uh, as he's encountering it, because he's walking into darkness everywhere he went. And, uh, and every little church that he established, every little place that he uh, stopped to preach, uh, he was the light that they they didn't realize they were missing. And the same could be for us. We need to be light, no matter where we are, and don't give people the opportunity to say we're just like everybody else, because we're not. Yeah, that, that, that's the, one of the biggest slaps, I, I would say, that, that a Christian can take. Why are you just like everybody else? Okay? And when we behave like everybody else, that's what people will pick up, okay? When they're telling us we're, we're weird and strange, then uh, we we're, we're, we're probably have a better chance of being, yeah. being on the right path. People. The uh, uh, peculiar people, thank you, Amber, that's right. Um, we, in this church, have been very privileged over the years to have leaders who have challenged us, challenged us to know the Word of God. That's how you know the will of God, is you have to know the Word of God. We aren't to walk on Sunday and maybe Tuesday night in the light. Okay. Thank you, Anna, thank you, Dennis, Anna, you had you had something else yeah, you wanted to yes, add? Yes, I do. In Ma Matthew 6, um, I'm not sure which one, it says he spoke with authority, but even better, in Capernaum when he was, um, he, he was casting out the spirits, uh, that's, uh, let's see, 22 of Matthew, uh, right here. It says, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for he thought, he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And this is it. You know, when people say, oh, the whole world's going to be one religion, it'll be great. We all worship the same God. No, we don't. And, and, and Christ's authority and his blood is what we have to get across. You know, people are being so deceived now because it's so evil how all godliness is being taken out of this world. Or they're trying to. But it's, you know, Christ is the one with the authority. And he's the one we follow. And, and these other religions, we can know a little bit about them to discuss it with people. But um, there's, there's no one, no name that anybody could be saved under except Jesus. Yeah, that, there isn't to be our belief. That's what we believe. That's what you believe. What does God say? What does the Word of God say? We should know it, and we should strive to uh, um, to live it as it is.
presented in, 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 the, in the Word of God. And if you just come in here on Sunday and listen to Dennis and I, or Rich or, or Steve, and you take whatever we take out of here, well, hopefully you've been entertained, but you've got to, you, we've been challenged by others in this church. We continue to challenge you to know the word of God. And then likewise, you should challenge us back. If you don't know, well, where do you get that? How, how is it that, that you see, I, I, I never heard that before, or I, I never saw it that way before. And be convinced in your own heart. Don't ever be um, reduced to saying, well, Brother Bruce said, who cares what Brother Bruce says? Unless Brother Bruce is quoting the Word of God, okay? And if he is other than, you know, on the other side of what the Word of God is, there's no question who you want to believe, all right? Brother Steve. On what Anna was saying, uh, because uh, a lot of times, as people know, I, I do a scripture reading uh, over the phone chain. Yes, thank you. One thing that I... I have made in my own life to do because God says in his word that he has put all things under the sun, under his son. Mm -hmm. So the only name that should really be the name that we should really be looking unto is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So many gods, even Jesus said, you know, you, you, even you believe there's, there are so many gods. Mm -hmm that when people say, oh, you know, God bless you, or, 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 or they just throw God out now, because it's so common, because there are just so many different gods in what other people believe, because it's easier to sit there and believe in different gods. But you cannot claim the name of Jesus unless you know Jesus. Jesus' name cannot just be thrown out and be like, oh, well, this is our Jesus, that's our Jesus. You don't hear that. Because God has put all things under his Son. And the only name by which we can be saved is through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Peter said, you know what? Repent and be baptized. And we are baptized in the name of Jesus. And so Jesus is the name that you just don't hear anymore. No. You don't, you don't hear throughout... All of this world, as of right now, there seems to be such an apostasy happening where just the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Jesus, you just don't hear it. You're not hearing it anywhere anymore. And that's why it's so important to be in the Word and so important to have a church that speaks the truth. And just like you said a couple seconds ago, it is up to us to go before the Word and before the Holy Spirit and to ask that we be taught. We listen to what you say, Brother Bruce, and we don't just take it as, well, Brother Bruce said, like you, like what you said. We take it to Scripture, we pray about it, and we look into it to see what what deeper things that the Lord can be speaking to, to me, individually. And that's how we are supposed to be. Thank you, thank you, Steve. Um, so that, that, that brings it back to, to, to verse 17. This I say, Paul says, therefore and testify in the Lord. Okay? This isn't coming from Paul. Paul is giving you what, Je what the Lord has given him, what the Lord Jesus Christ has taught him. That's where Paul got his teachings from. Okay? The Lord spoke and taught him directly, we're told in Galatians. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds. No longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. That's 
you do a year about face. You used to walk as Gentiles, and many of us were happy in it. Repent of your ways. It doesn't matter if the rest of the world goes that direction. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, everybody believes that. Everybody knows that man has an immortal soul. What does scripture say? God only has immortality. Would someone look for me, please, and find, read for us Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, please. It doesn't matter what, where everybody else is going. Everybody I know, everybody I know believes this, okay? If it's good enough, if it's good enough for Billy Graham, it's good enough for me. When Billy Graham quotes scripture, it's good enough for me. Okay? But is it because everybody is going in that direction? Justin, you're going to read that for us, please? Thank yes, you. sir. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate. For the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. Okay. Having heard that, brethren, yeah. you want to be on the, the big expressway that everybody's jumping on? going so fast on in this world today, okay? You want to go where they're going? Off the end, off the cliff. It leads to destruction. It seems right, you're darn right it seems right to our old self and the way we saw things and did things. Narrow is the way that leads to life. Narrow is the gate, and that gate is Jesus Christ. Amen. Period. Period. That's what God has set up. You should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their minds. What do you think that means, in the futility of their minds? Anybody got a thought? Anna? I'm sorry, but this is important. I don't think we realize, and we do realize, that Satan is clever. But I had a lengthy conversation with my cousin David. You know where California is going with the dogs. They have a progressive religion based on the Bible. This is the truth, because my cousin is in it. We're praying for her. Where they take the scriptures they like and choose and they disregard the other scriptures. Now, if that isn't deceitful and what you just said from Satan, I don't know what is. And, and what word did you just use? I'm sorry, because I wanted to get this in here. Fut uh, futility of the futility mind. Futility of the mind. Oh, yeah. I, w I happen to uh, watch somebody, I know nobody does politics here, who referenced something on CNN. And do you know what the woke religion is that they try to spread around the world? We're all gods, yeah, they said, and God is a she and a he and a this and a that, and besides choosing the sex you want to be, I mean, everything is so convoluted and away from the word of God, we've got to take the total Bible, and we've got to be in this work, because I have a feeling they're going to take these Bibles away from us someday if we're still alive. I've been hearing that in this church since Brother Tim Clonar back in the old be. church, and, I, and I, I used to sit there and giggle. That Brother Tim, I don't giggle anymore. The things that, that we see happen. 
It's more important than ever to know what you, why you believe, what you believe, yeah. and how you, how to find it. If you take it out of context, you can say anything you want and act like you're talking like a Christian and deceive, one can deceive many people. And that religion is growing among young people. See, Satan has been doing that for 2,000 years. And there's a reason why we, why God has always told their parents to be bringing up their children in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. Because when they cease to do that, all right, more than ever in this country, you've got everybody pushing in, pushing them the other direction. Okay? In the futility or emptiness of their minds, we are not born knowing God's ways. We're little babies, and we learn by what's around us. And if parents fail to teach their children, the world's going to teach them. And the push today is get the children earlier into the world's teaching. Okay? Let's have universal preschool, because we can start earlier. We aren't born knowing God's ways. Our minds are empty. Fut the futility of their minds, the emptiness of their minds. Our ways are not God's ways, and we must be about the renewing of our minds. We have been taught, again, the ways of this world. They're all natural, and they fit. Most of them fit well into the way that we live. We need an about face. Brother Steve, yes. I, I knew somebody was waiting back there. Brother <laughs> Steve. And uh, as you're saying with futility, it uh, it's also, you know, means destruction. You know, it's going to the it's going the way of destruction. I believe uh, Paul says it and I you know, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it's in Corinthians where he says, you know, when we walked in the old way of under sin, everything we did led to death. When we come to Christ, we stay focused on him, everything will reap the reward of life. Everything that, that we have done according to the ways of the world is futile. It leads to destruction. It leads to death. It does. It has no profit whatsoever. But when we are in Christ and we seek Him and we ask for the Holy Spirit and we grow to be more and more like Him, then it will lead to life. You know. So, to your question, is that the futility of our minds is? is it's a dead thought. It's it's the way of death. Like Anna's saying, that the way the world's going, as, as you mentioned, grab the kids when they're younger. Yeah to lead them all, you know, to the way of destruction. That's that's the way of the world. That's Satan's way. That's what it's always been, and that's how it always will be. And that's why we need Christ Jesus. Amen. A amen. The um, all of our minds are empty of the ways of God. We need to learn them. We need, they, they aren't, our, our, our hearts aren't just good. Our hearts are hard, okay? And as I said, some are, are harder than others, all right? And, so, and, and, and the principles in Scripture, when they're followed, even by non-believers, work because of principles of God, okay? But will they change your heart? You've got to have a heart of flesh. 18 says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Okay? The, um, they are blinded by a hardness in their hearts. They have no appreciation of truth and light. 
If they, have, if they don't know Jesus, they have no way of appreciating truth and light. They are deceived by Satan. Satan who has fooled the whole world. Okay? It is working overtime, which may be an indication that we're close to the end. All are alienated from God by sin, and sin has a compounding effect on the depravity of man, and thus they're ignorant to how we are to live. Having your understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, that's the natural position of mankind. We are born sinners and that sin has alienated us from, the, from God. Because of the ignorance that is in them, they have no understanding of God, they don't know God. We were talking earlier, there are many who go and sit in churches, but they still don't know God, they don't know who Jesus Christ is. Because of the blindness of their hearts. They don't know him and they don't care. They don't care. Okay. And then 19, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to the lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Okay. So, who, being past feeling, what, what, what do you think Paul's trying to say here? Okay. Those who, being past feeling, have given themselves over what do you think Paul is, the, Paul's point here is? Brother Steve? I'm going to say uh, that feeling is the, along the same lines of acknowledgement. You just, you've just shut yourself down to where you don't care about anything. You're just going to go the way you want to go. Uh, there are plenty of people in my life who sit there and say, uh, I'm done feeling or I'm done fighting. I'm just going to go through life just blah. And they really don't care. And that opens the door for Satan and all this evil to come in and take control. Because if you don't have the feeling, desire, you know, the, the, the love or the want, then you're, you're just an empty canvas that you're handed yourself over to Satan to do with what he pleases. You are pleasing Satan, there's no doubt about it. The hard heart has no passion or feelings for the things of God. If you understand what God has done through the Lord Jesus Christ, you have got to have a hard heart. You can be ignorant, and that's, that's one thing. You talk to people and they'll, they'll give a shrug. Many of the go to churches will give a mental acceptance. Yeah, 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 that's the word of God, all right. Do you, look, do you try to live the word of God? No, don't get carried away. Don't get carried away with this. <laughs> They're not moved by it at all. It doesn't change their lives. If they hear the word of God and it doesn't move them to be different, in one ear, out the other. Yeah. Why do you go to that church? Oh, I love the music. Yeah. They've got a great music program. Uh -huh. The music director is terrific. No offense, brother Richard, <laughs> but that ought not to be it's part of why we come here, but that's not the that that's not the main point. Brother Richards tells us all the time. Focus on these words. There's sermons in these words. There's our instructions in these words. 
All right? They've taken the feeling and the emotion and they've written it into song. What a talent. Those who are past feeling. I don't, I don't, I, 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 I have a hard time understanding people in the middle. I understand the people on fire for, for Christ. And I understand the people, no, 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 don't get, you know, fairy tales. Go, 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 go spread your fairy tales. Over. I understand them. I was one of them, okay? But it's the ones that say they know and hear, and yet aren't motivated to share the word with others, to change their own lives, to do that about faith. Okay. Okay, maybe we'll tweak a little here, we'll tweak a little there. You know, uh, you know, I go to church because it, it makes me a little better person. It should be making you a whole new person. That's what Christ came for. Okay. Have given themselves over to lewdness to, to work all uncleanness with greediness. They just turn themselves over. If it feels good, do it. Yeah. Right? What's your religion? Hey, if it feels good, do it. You know, I, I, don't get in, I don't get in other people's way. They better not get in mine. I'm fine. I feel good. All right? We'll go on. Justin? And this will, then we'll, we'll close. I just wanted to say that um, in uh, my Bible, on verse 19, it just uh, really, uh, something that just uh, stood out to me, and it said, and they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is, this is, this is the way of the world. Who can get, who wins? Whoever can gather the most toys. All right? Who can, who can do the least for others and get the most for themselves. That's the way of the, that's the way of the world. Thank you, Justin. And uh, we'll, <laughs> I guess we didn't finish chapters four and five. Uh, we, we didn't get three verses, but I thank you for your, for your, for your comments. And, and, and uh, this is the way we, we, we share with each other and understand each other. Um, and we'll, we'll we'll come back to this. We're we're hardly hardly finished. How do we walk as children of light? First, stop digging. If you want to get out of the hole, stop digging. All right, Justin. Thank you, Brother Bruce. Thank you for those for that wonderful uh, sermon study. And now um, let's go ahead and close with him 472. Teach me your way, O Lord. 472. Let's go ahead and sing the first and last verses.
Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and earth, the giver of every good and perfect gift, the giver of life itself, and the giver of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in whom we have life. Father, we humbly come before you and we, we thank you for this time together. As we consider the, uh, the manner of lives that we are to live, we understand, Father, that the world's ways seem so easy and assuring to us, Father, but we have your word, and we, have, we know the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts. And that new heart which we receive when we came to him gives us a, a whole new perspective of why we are here. No wonder that the world is still searching after thousands and thousands of years and study. What are we here for? We're here, Father, to glorify you. You have given us eyes to see and ears that hear. You have given you given us your precious word. So we don't have to wonder what does God want. It's right here, right here in your word. You want us to be loving like the Lord Jesus Christ. You want us to be caring like the Lord Jesus Christ. You want us here to do thy will, O oh my God. Such is what you want. Such is what you have taught us. And so, Father, we thank you for the writing of the great Apostle Paul and those things which Jesus has given him to, to uh, put down and, and say for these 2,000 years that we might sit in little Summersworth, New Hampshire, in a group of 15 or 18 to seek seek what you want us to know what you want us to remember and to live lives that are pleasing to you and that is our prayer father that is our desire to live lives that reflect what you have taught us what the Lord Jesus Christ has made in our lives to be motivated by it, to be pushed, to continue to do more and more and leave more and more of the world behind. So Father, we thank you and we praise you. And once again, we want to bring our sister Cindy before you, Father, and uh, with her different illnesses, Father, and, and, and challenges. Be with her, be with your children throughout the world, we pray, Father. Could we ask it all in Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen.